Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our third installments of Algonot's um, Community All Hands Around Governance for the Algorand Foundation. Um, you're really welcome and we're really excited. Um, as October 1st, the Algorand ecosystem will move to a decentralized governance model. Community governance will enable all Algo holders to participate in the decision making process of the, um, on the growth and development of the Algorand ecosystem. The governance approach for the Algorand community is designed for simplicity and maximum participation. We're delighted to have um, our three uh, panelists today. Uh, Sean Lee, he's our CEO of Algorand Foundation, Massimo, our chief economist, um, and Shai, um, who is our research fellow for the Algorand Foundation. So how this talk will go today is um, We'll have Sean, uh, Massimo, and Shai will be speaking for uh, you know, about 20 minutes. Um, and then you, the community, have um, submitted questions and we'll be going through um, those questions. Any questions that we don't answer today, we'll be um, answering them on our FAQs. So um, don't fret, they will, they will be answered um, in, in the next couple of days. So Sean, I don't want to take up any more time. Um, I'll let you kick it off. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it is exciting to see over 600 of you, uh, many of you probably waking up uh, first thing in the morning as well, to be joining this session. So that, thank you, uh, you know, from the bottom of our hearts uh, in terms of uh, getting your interest uh, in, our, in the launch of our governance program. Now, uh, I see many familiar faces here and, and, and well, names, uh, so very glad to see all of you. Uh, I think it's quite important for us to uh, take a step back uh, some of you, you know, have been following along uh, over the past few months in terms of our uh, announcements on community governance uh, and various different mechanisms that we're building in, uh, into it, uh, which will be launched in the next, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, with that said, though, uh, I think it's good to set the stage uh, and review a bit on um, how we came about uh, creating the community governance program and also some of the mechanics that we have gone through during our last all hands so that we have a refresher and kind of set the, set the stage for some of the questions and answers that we'll be doing in the, in the later half of this hour. So with that said, I'm gonna share my screen, uh, just share a couple of slides and, and uh, we'll get going on that front. So give me one second. All right. Joe, can you tell me if the screen is up? Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, so as you can see on the left-hand side, we only have a few slides, but I think it's important for us to kind of review some of the previous points that we have discussed um, and so just to make sure that we're all on the same page uh, in regards to what this program is all about. Um, as we have discussed previously, uh, it is extremely important uh, for the Algorand ecosystem to continue uh, on our decentralization journey. Uh, and part of being a blockchain uh, that is maturing very quickly, attracting a lot of attention. Uh, obviously, uh, you could, uh, many of you can see some of the recent engagements and activities that we've been creating within the ecosystem. Uh, being fully decentralized uh, is a very important goal of ours. And that is, some, uh, that is a aspiration that we continue to strive towards. Now, uh, as many of you probably have seen over the last uh, few days, uh, our circulating supply is, has now passed 5 billion algo. Uh, and we feel like this is perfect, a perfect time for us to really take this radical step uh, in achieving this vision uh, of creating a fully decentralized algo, uh, Algorand ecosystem. Uh, as of uh, today, we are number 17 uh, on coin market cap. Uh, and I think many of you probably have uh, noticed uh, some of the updates that we've been um, that we've been passing out on Twitter and other social channels, and I think this is uh, certainly something all of us are very proud of, uh, and continue to be you know encouraging us to, to do our jobs. Now, what is this governance program all about? Right, uh, the governance program is for the foundation uh, to hand over control to the community. All of you uh, on this call here, here today, uh, the remaining ecosystem resources that are currently uh, managed by the foundation. Now, as many of you uh, have seen over the last few months, we have launched many uh, ecosystem programs uh, from our Algo Grant program to our Trailblazer Bounty program to our accelerators uh, and many of the education and research specific um, programs that we are running as well. What we're doing in this 
particular governance uh, program is to basically hand over the control in terms of how we spend in this ecosystem. So all of us within the community, along with the foundation ourselves, uh, we are on the same page in terms of the directions that we want to go together and how we want to continue to see this, the ecosystem evolve. So this is a very important step for us. And we're very proud to be able to move into this stage uh, of, our, uh, of, of, of the journey uh, with all of you. Now, in terms of the numbers, uh, we have uh, coined this term, right? AERP, which is Algorand Ecosystem Resource Pool. Uh, as we have uh, discussed in our long-term algodynamic page and also our decentralization uh, pages on the website, uh, this equal roughly 3 billion um, algo, and all of these will be, uh, will be placed under the control uh, of the community governors uh, in terms of the decision-making uh, on where these ecosystem resources will be spent. Uh, and again, this is really going towards our commitment that building a, a simple, inclusive, and very importantly, transparent system for community governance uh, is the utmost important for all of us uh, moving forward. Now, in terms of a little bit more around the program itself, um, as we mentioned, the, the goal is really to entrust the future of the ecosystem to the community, uh, especially those that are committed uh, to the Algram project and its vision. Now, this is a program that is open to all Algram users, right? Any algo holders can choose to become governors. And of course, we will encourage you to do so uh, if that is, some, that is a choice that you choose to make. Uh, the program will begin in October 2021. Uh, I remember the last time when we were talking about this slide, uh, we were still a few months out. Uh, and uh, you know, before we know it, we're literally three, three and a half weeks uh, away from the launching of this program. So we're certainly very excited about that. And we've been work working very hard on making sure the program is launched properly. And also the communication channels are open for all of you uh, to, be to be asking questions uh, as you may choose as well. The, the commitment period uh, in terms of the governance program, uh, as, you, as we have indicated previously, is 90 days. It is three months. We have not changed it. We will keep it, keep it to our words and we'll continue to evolve on this. Now, of course, later on, if the community decides that the commitment, the commitment period could be potentially longer, for example, and we vote, um, we, we, we vote together on that, then certainly that would be a decision that we can make together. But at this moment, at launch, the commitment period is aiming to be 90 days. Now, what does that mean? That means every quarter there'll be an entry point and that this ensures maximum participation for existing and new uh, Algorand users altogether. So every, every 90 days, uh, folks can choose to come in and join in the community governance program. And I think that is the, the most um, you know, flexible and also open way for all of us to participate uh, into the into the future of where our, our where our project is going to go. Uh, now, one thing that's very important, alongside with the commitment period, and that is the voting. Right, there is a job that all of you governors are signing up for, uh, and that is the act the the action of voting, voting on various different proposals that we're going to put forth, uh, as well as in the future proposals that you will be submitting uh, for all of us to be deciding together as well. All of these voting, uh, just as the commitment period, uh, will take place on a quarterly basis. And there will be penalties for early exits, but we're, we're going to talk about that in a bit. Uh, now, what we're, what's very important here to remember is that all of you who, are, who have been holding the ALGO have been earning participation reward. That is the mechanism that we have built into the network since the beginning and that will continue to be in place. For this Q4, starting in October, that participation reward program will still be in place. However, moving into 2022, we will gradually reduce the participation reward so that we can fully embrace the governance uh, program. And by the end of 2022, the participation reward program as it is today will end and we will fully move into a governance po reward program moving forward after that. So I want to make sure that point is explained again, because I know many of you have reached out to me and my team uh, asking about participation reward and the transition into, in, into the governance uh, reward program. And certainly I wanted to make sure that point uh, is repeated here again. One more slide on my side. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the voting aspect. So 
obviously, this is to decide together the future of the Algorand ecosystem and the direction in which we're going to be going. So a lot of the, the topics that we have been talking internally, as well as with many of you that are on this call today, you know, a lot of the voting topics are going to be around major economic and policy decisions in the, in the ecosystems, uh, especially as it relates to the distribution of our resource pool. Now, some of these things will be included in there. Now, of course, this is the very first time, uh, this is the inception uh, governance period. So we don't want to inundate, it, uh, inundate all of you to, with way too many proposals and way too many decision points. So we're gonna keep it simple. However, just to illustrate the type of vote that you will be expected as a governor to be vo voted upon will include a number of these things over here. That includes the distribution of uh, innovation grants. It includes various different partnerships that we may be forming together, uh, as well as I think some of you have also been asking, node runner infrastructure incentives could become part of the votes here as well. Of course, um, as you, all of you know, we're focusing very heavily around social impact, social goods uh, initiative. And certainly we're looking into potentially investing uh, very into various different projects that are, uh, that are in those ecosystems, uh, as well as of course, uh, very importantly, the governance reward and the, and the incentive itself. So like I said, uh, in the inception period, we're, very, we're gonna very likely just focus on the governance reward and incentive, get us going and get maximum participation and as we go on from quarter to quarter every 90 days, we're going to evaluate with all of you to identify what are some of those votes that would be most applicable towards the short-term, medium-term, and long-term goal of, uh, of our projects. And then we'll decide together what are some of those votes and topics that would be applicable uh, for us to do. Um, the second bullet here, I just wanna kind of touch base a little bit, right? And this is a very, very, very important point, right? The foundation's job, is to set up the votes. We are the facilitator, but we will not be participating in the vote. And what that means, uh, to put in plain old English, we, the foundation, will not be earning governance reward. We wanted to take ourselves completely out. We, we think this, is, this creates a more fair environment. This allows us to really play the facilitator role rather than us having direct stake into the program and, there, and, and thereby potentially um, and, you know, there, there could be some interesting aspect in, in, in that regards uh, that, might, that might, you know, might not be as uh, transparent and as, as clear. So we've decided that we will not participate in the voting. We will facilitate the votes and the proposals that all of you will be, will be voting on, and we will not be get, getting governance reward. So I just want to take, a chance, take an opportunity here to repeat that as well. Uh, lastly, uh, the last two bullets here, reward distribution is linked to the act of voting, all right? Not just commitment. So Shai is gonna go through some of the mechanism in terms of the user experience uh, from a governor perspective on what you will be expecting to do. But I wanted to kind of just preface that by saying, it's not just a matter of committing or locking your stake. The, that is the first step. The second step is you do need to vote, right? And obviously there will be different choices uh, that you'll be previewed to, but the act of voting is important. And I want to emphasize that point here as well. Uh, and lastly, we are a proof of stake network. One committed algo equals one vote. Uh, that is the, the most democratic way of running a system like ours and a network like ours. And we will continue to hold true uh, to, to, the, to the nature and the principle of our network. With that, I'd like to pass it to Massimo to go through a bit more details on the reward itself as well as some of the considerations that we have put into how we would design these, uh, the, the, these reward rates and, and, and so on. Massimo, can I flip to the next slide? Yeah, show me what the next slide is. Go to the next one, because there is a, an order of, of relevance. Okay, right, so let me thank move that, here you go. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you, Sean, for the fantastic uh, explanation of uh, what are the principles of our governance and already helping us in describing many of the of the mechanics you know of course uh, uh, what we can see here in this slide uh, is not going to be the topic of my brief presentation because we have few minutes we publish papers we publish documents on these things uh, that are related to our economic analysis simulation and so on that has been at the foundation of our governance design 
But let me point out uh, uh, a few more keywords uh, that go from, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the fundamental spirit of our governance into also what it means uh, uh, for, 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 for the future, you know, of, uh, uh, of the digital economy. I believe that one incredible advantage of a system like the one we are designing is the transparency. So before uh, everything else, you know, think of how transparent are decisions taken in this way compared to any traditional ways of uh, uh, making decisions. Uh, the second thing that I want to focus upon is the power of decision making that the governors are going to have. Well, I, I welcome any kind of governance in the blockchain uh, space, you know, community governance. But, you know, often when we think of community governance, uh, we think, you know, of acting on the protocol. And this is certainly fantastic. At times, you know, when we talk of things like DeFi and so on, we think of actually uh, managing resources that are flowing to the blockchain, which is also fantastic. But what we're going to do here is slightly different. You know, here we are talking about the resources that uh, are part, you know, of the foundation. What we're going to do is asking you to commit in order to get real decision-making power on these resources. You know? So these are really economy decisions. I don't want to call it economic decisions. Sounds academic and it's not going to be anything like that in spite of a lot of academic work behind it. Let me say that, uh, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to talk like uh, the uncle of Spider-Man, you know, but with power, commitment of always comes in something Sean uh, was telling uh, us all today. I, I tell you the truth, uh, yes, with decision power, also commitment comes. You know. Commitments mean two things. One is probably more common language, the other one is a little bit more blockchain parlance. Uh, in terms of common language, commitment means uh, that uh, there is a little bit to study for deciding, for having power, for taking decision. There is a bit, little bit to study, no rocket science, but there are things to read, things to watch, things to think about. It's nothing, nothing bad in it. And, you know, uh, secondly, commitment also means uh, that uh, the algo holders that decide to become governors uh, may, in some cases, also the algo holders that decide to go for, for the other usages or economic uh, usages that you can find on the blockchain. And obviously, you will find very many. You know? But uh, it's also a, a real commitment. So the, the algos are there to show that everyone is there, that everyone has got skin in the game, that everyone is showing uh, that they are going to stand the consequences of their decision, which is fundamental you know, responsibility for any form of decision making. And, uh, you know, uh, commitment. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, thing to, to think about. Commitment from the economic point of view is also for us uh, uh, to make this system fully sustainable, ensuring uh, uh, good decisions are taken, uh, ensuring that uh, uh, our algo holders remain loyal. And what we can see, I mean, in, in our simulation is our effort to make uh, uh, the system totally sustainable. You know? Considering all the fantastic things of a blockchain system, a fixed supply, no real, uh, you know, uh, policy making that could not be, in a sense, predictable, even if there are always things, you know, like algorithmic aspects of blockchain or think, for example, of the great vote you made that made the, 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 the community governance become a reality. We, we couldn't predict that, you know, but we, we published uh, almost one year ago a long-term plan, you know, that, that was sustainable and we want also the governors uh, to be sustainable. That's the purpose, you know, of putting a, a little bit of design uh, um, into it. And, uh, you know, when, when, when we come, you know, to, to, to a topic that many people talk about because it seems particularly interesting, which are rewards, uh, in a sense, I, I don't feel that I really have to, to talk about, you know, algos uh, and things like that. Because the biggest piece of news is that uh, there's going to be a decision of the governors about the level of rewards. And anyone could say at that point, oh, come on, are the governors deciding about their own rewards? That's always going to be up. You know, why? 
Why? You know, obviously there are advantages in uh, uh, increasing rewards and there are advantages in using the resources in other ways because the resources in a blockchain in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the Algo Foundation are limited and everyone knows what the number is. So a governor will in the next uh, uh, quarter maybe have to decide about another thing related uh, um, related to the ecosystem. Th there is a friend of us that suggested in the chat to erase uh, uh, the ecosystem as a word. I mean, I personally make a vote to erase all the buzzwords, you know, but in a sense, you know, uh, uh, ecosystem means really the importance of our economy, means everything that can be built on Algorand, around Algorand, in Algorand, you know, so we know what, what we mean. And when you have to take uh, a decision about the ecosystem, you may feel happier of, on all senses, you know, commonwealth, uh, personal aspect, whatever, in making a decision that allows to use uh, uh, Algos for some great uh, ecosystem, ecosystem project. That's the reason why the votes about uh, uh, rewards will always be of this kind, you know, it's not only going to be a choice on uh, what algos are for uh, the, the, the governance rewards, because uh, these algos, in any case, will be used for something you will decide upon in the future, you know. So it's uh, it's, it's it's a really important decision that goes uh, uh, into the heart of what being a governor means. Now I'm asking Sean, can you go up a little bit, one slide, actually, or maybe now, now it is down. No, no, now it is down. Oh, this one. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. The other one. Yes, uh, obviously, everyone knows, uh, can read on our website. Uh, um, it's basically on, in line with what we had already published on the long term algodynamics, what you could find in our paper, you know. But obviously, there is an amount uh, of rewards which is allocated to governance that, by the way, for this, uh, um, for this quarter is going to be added to what uh, had been allocated for participation rewards. And uh, there is a little bit of a different mechanics, you know, because participation rewards uh, reach uh, every algo holders with some uh, technicalities, governance rewards reach those who decide to commit to governance. And, you know, no one can predict now uh, who is gonna decide to mm, commit to governance you can predict about yourself or you can make guesses uh, li like anyone else you know and you know everyone will be certainly happy i think would be certainly happy to commit to, to governance a lot but may maybe someone uh, want to keep the algo for other usages uh, someone want to start small in learning how it works the actual rewards that every algo world that we receive will just depend on this mechanics that is in your hands uh, uh, completely, you know. So there's not so much to say um, about, uh, uh, about that. Uh, in any case, you know, you can find really a lot of uh, detailed resources on our uh, uh, reasoning and analysis about the, the mechanics of governance and its sustainability. Well, uh, for the other questions that may remain, I'm happy to take them uh, online uh, later on. Great, Massimo, thank you. I'm gonna pass now the time to Shai to go over some of what many of you are actually asking on the chat window right now. Uh, and that is the user experience. What will you be doing and how would you be interacting with the governance program itself? So Shai, take it away. Thank you. So. In the interest of getting to the questions, I'm going to try to be brief. Uh, the goal in the designing of the user experience is to the extent possible to have every algorithm account uh, be able to participate regardless of what wallet they're using, custodians or whatever, anything else. Um, we are going to supply uh, a simple web application for governors to use uh, where some wallets uh, have seamless integration into it. Uh, currently, the wallets that are integrated are uh, Algo Signer, uh, My Algo Wallet, and the official Algo and Wallet. Uh, and other uh, wallets, custodian, etc., will still be able to tie into it, but you know the governors will have to do some cut and pasting uh, in order to use that uh, or a QR code. And I'll show you just a, a, some, a little sample in a minute. Uh, but either way, the main things that you would need to do as a governor 
is uh, going to our web application uh, and interacting with it and then send a simple pay transaction of zero algos to a specific address with something in the notes field saying what is it that you want to do so if you sign up the notes field will say sign up with um, committing to 300 algos uh, and if it's a voting then the notes field will say i vote for yes on question one and no on question two uh, let me give you a very brief taste of the uh, how the screen looks like. Can you switch to the next slide, please? Yeah. Uh, how the uh, user interface looks like. It's still a little bit in the flux. It's going to be finalized this week or next. Uh, so on the left, this is what you see when you just go into uh, the governance and web application and want to... Uh, uh, sign up as a governor for the next period. Uh, what you see is, um, you know, you need to connect your wallet, which means uh, if it's one of the wallets that are already integrated, then you would check that, check that one. Otherwise, you check uh, other wallet, and then you'll see the thing on the right where, uh, after saying how much you want to, uh, uh, you know, what is the address that you want to use as your governor's address and how much you want to commit, uh, it essentially just pops up a window and tells you, please send um, a transaction with this notes field to that address. And this is for the other wallet. Then you just cut and paste the address and the notes field to your wallet or your custodian uh, interface or whatever it is and use their normal processes to sign up if your wallet is one of the three that are integrated then things are even simpler then you just say what is it that you want to do and you go through the normal process of my algo wallet or the official algo and wallet or algo signer uh whatever it is that uh they use to sign um transactions that means in particular that if your wallet uh, supports ledger integration, for example, then you can use your ledger uh, in order to be a governor. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say at this level about the user experience. Uh, we keep it extremely light. The one other thing that I would say, this is still the UI is still not finalized for that, is for uh, claiming your rewards at the end. Uh, different than participation rewards that we currently have governance rewards require that you click some button to claim your rewards we will provide you that button uh, on the same or similar uh, web application you would go you would tell us who you are what uh, who, what is your address and you will click a button to claim my rewards for the governance period that just ended. And then if you kept your commitment that you said you would and you voted in all the, uh, in all the uh, sessions, then uh, you will get your rewards via, um, from the escrow that keeps the rewards for that governance period. Great, thanks Shai. Um, so we're going to go into questions. Um, don't worry if we don't answer all the questions or questions that you submitted. We will be putting them up um, on our FAQs around governance um, on our website. So um, I think just I'm going to go into um, a lot of uh, kind of wallet questions um, and we'll start there because I know a lot of you had questions around that. So um, let me see, Sean. Um, this is the question for you. Uh, do exchanges get a vote? Well, um, all algo holders will get a vote. So in, in that sense, exchanges that do hold algos uh, will get a vote. Now, of course, every exchange operates differently. Um, so it really depends on the interactions uh, that they would uh, they want to be you know, ha having with their algo holders, uh, as well as how they intend to be participating in governance. Uh, my team have been working very closely with exchanges and also custodian providers and others uh, so that we communicate with them in terms of how the program will run and also how they would be participating on behalf of their algo holders uh, that are part of their um, part of their community. So uh, many of them will, will be releasing uh, communications in, in regards to that. Um, but uh, from a from the per per perspective of whether the exchanges can participate and the answer is yes. Okay, great. 
Um, I know that this has been answered, but I think it's important. Shai, it's a question for you. Um, is is every um, everyone holding Algo in their wallet automatically signed up to the governance program? No, you need to sign up. You need to go to our web interface. You need to declare that I am willing to commit uh, some number of algos for the current governance period, the upcoming governance period, uh, and click some button and then sign a transaction to that effect, this pay transaction that I mentioned before. One thing that I didn't mention, but it's important to uh, keep in mind, when you commit to keep a, a particular uh, balance, you commit to keep that particular balance. If because of transaction fees that you got out of your account, it goes beyond below that balance, you will be disqualified for that period as a governor. So we highly recommend that you will not commit 100% of what's in your account. Take whatever it is that in your account minus one algo. Don't commit to more than that, just to make sure that you have enough there to pay uh, transaction fees on the things that you need to do in governance and whatever other things you want to do in your, with your uh, account. Okay. Joanna, just one quick question. It's a follow on for Shai. I've just seen it come through on the chat. Is yeah. more like preemptive opt in, Shai? So, when do we think it'll actually be available to opt in uh, for the first period? The first period, the uh, sign up window will open October 1st and will close October 15th. Okay, great. Thanks, Shai. And actually, another kind of follow up question to that is you know, will uh, the users receive a mail whenever they, whenever they have to do something? Will it come through the app? I don't think so. We will use our normal communication channels, social, if you're on some, some of our mailing list or anything like that, yes. Uh, the... Yeah, but yeah, I mean, the gov I mean, the governors are not, uh, obviously are not KYC. We talked about that previously. Um, so we're not gonna have any direct one-to-one -one communication channels with them. So as Shai mentioned, we will be going through our social channels so that all community members will be able to understand uh, a lot of the details moving moving on that front. And I'm assuming that the wallets that integrate our governance will show you when you sign into, when you access that wallet, it will show you a banner saying vote is not open, now open, please go vote. Uh, but and, and of course, the web application will have that. If you go there, you will see current vote uh, in progress. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, a lot of you had questions around yearly. So, um, Sean, this is a question. Uh, can I participate in yearly and governance at the same time? Uh, great question. Uh, and it's probably not just applicable to yearly. Uh, there'll be other imminently launched uh, DeFi projects uh, that are coming onto the Algorand ecosystem as well. Many of you probably have seen, uh, seen notification in, in that regard. So in regards to all of those platforms, uh, these, are, these will be considered as separate stick. So what you will be committing into governance versus what you will be locking into other DeFi platforms or Algo DeFi platforms will be separate, right? So um, you know, in terms of how you would manage that, uh, some uh, within the community we've, uh, we've talked to, they'll probably choose to have two separate accounts, two separate wallets, one for governance and one for you know, other, uh, other participation into other platforms. Some may choose to put it in the same, but you know what, what, what we would remind all of you is that when you go into the interface that Shai was sharing with you previously, what you're committing in there is something that will be monitored, right? That is part of your obligation, your responsibility, so that the stake that you have committed remain in that wallet. So if you choose to combine that with other platforms, uh, certainly that's something that you have to monitor yourself. Um, but if you do choose to have separate wallet addresses to manage governance on top of um, every other participation, that's probably a little bit cleaner way of doing it. But again, it's your choice. Okay. Um, so Massimo, this is a question around decentralization. Um, so how will Algorand ensure that the richest users don't control the entire network if each algo is worth one vote? Well, no, in a sense, this is, again, uh, something that the governors uh, uh, can decide by committing their algos, you know, that's, that's, that's the, 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 the biggest way, you know, is that every algo holders, uh, even uh, one algo holder commits to governance. So we understand this, uh, this, this issue. 
uh, uh, there are riches, there are riches in this world, uh, there are riches in every blockchain, uh, in a sense that there is inequality, you know. In uh, the blockchain, there is probably less than, 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 than in today world, you know, and under many points of view. At least in the blockchain, uh, there is a, a, a rather fair, uh, you know, mechanism. You know? The fair mechanism is the fact that this fair mechanism is often called proof of stake, to, to say the truth, you know, that those who actually hold more in this little world, in this little economy, are also those, in a sense, that are putting more skin in the game, which essentially means are those that more than anyone committed to take the right decision and do the right thing for everyone. You know, that's the logic of, uh, of proof of stake. In any case, I, I totally agree with, the, with this question. So in a sense, even if uh, I was saying, uh, yes, guys, uh, uh, think of what is the best application and so on, my personal suggestion is put, particularly if you are a small holder, put everything in your uh, small addresses. If you are large holders, think of the great opportunities you have in the future, also outside of that. Great, thanks, Massimo. Um, so this is a wallet question. I'm shy it's for you. Um, so can you provide a link and instruction to off-chain govern govern governance tool? Yeah, we will put a link to this web application that I mentioned. This would be the main way for governors to uh, interact with the governance system. Uh, I want to say that if your wallet uh, is one of the ones that integrate it, then you can just go to that wallet and everything will be done from there. It will direct you to that place. For everybody else, we will put in prominent places on our website and in using our channels, links to where you can find that application and use it. Perfect. Uh, it's more of a follow-up. Can I use any wallet for the governance process where I control the private keys or are there recommended wallets? So there are wallets that makes it easier, the, the three that I mentioned. Other wallets you can still use. Uh, the only requirement is you should be able to send algor algos on the Algorand network and you should be able to put something in the notes field. So any wallet that lets you do that, which is almost all of them, you can use. Okay. Um, sorry, apologies. This is kind of maybe repeated again, but it's really important. Will major exchanges uh, allow for uh, a way to participate in governance or will the official wallet need to be used? You don't need to use the official wallet, but exchanges is a different question. Exchanges, you do not have your own uh, uh, address. And what, as, as uh, Massimo was saying, uh, different exchanges could have different uh, policies about how you participate and how, what, what happens. So you're going to have to uh, look what the policies of your exchange uh, is, is offering its clients. OK, thank you. Um, this is more of a, uh, a question on a macro level. Um, Sean, it's for you. What are the drawbacks mm -hmm. to community governance? The drawback? Well, I like to think this is all good uh, for all <laughs> of us to be participating together rather than just a foundation deciding where the resources should be, should be spent and how the rewards should be created, right? Um, so I think this is really a, an all, all around good uh, step and productive step towards full de decentralization, as I mentioned previously. Um, I, I can't really think of any drawback uh, unless what well, some of you may say, well, um, I get participation reward today without having to do anything. Uh, and then now with governance reward, I actually have to vote. Well, if you're a committed governor and you really believe in the long-term goal and vision of what we're trying to do, we believe that's probably a small step for all of us to, to be participating in. Uh, and I think this is healthy for the overall ecosystem. Okay. Um, Sean, this is another question around general governance. Um, how will the community have influence over the issues that are voted on each voting period? Ah, excellent question. So I, I'm gonna repeat what I, I think I mentioned earlier and I'll, I'll just repeat that here. Uh, so for this inception, uh, governance period, and I'm referring to Q4 of this year, so starting in October. The very first vote, which Massimo mentioned earlier, will be around governance rewards, right? So that is going to be the vote uh, that is going to be put out for all of us to decide together. What we're moving forward in the subsequent quarters is going to look for, uh, look for ideas from all of you 
in regards to voting and proposals that uh, we all want to be uh, looking at. Now, some of those uh, categories we talked about earlier, uh, they may have to do with the relay node incentives. They may have to do in terms of how we spend in our innovation funds, our ecosystem programs, our grant programs and whatnot. So what, uh, what, we're, what we're looking to right now is making sure that the governance program is up and running. Everyone's used to the interface, used to the process and understand exactly how it works. And then we're gonna continue to evolve the governance program to involve more topics and more governance. But I want to emphasize something, right? We are going from you, algo holders, not really doing anything and getting participation reward to doing something. So we, we're absolutely certain that the user experience has to be very smooth. So we're going to gradually move into that direction and we're not gonna inundate all of us here uh, with many questions and many proposals we threw that's probably counterproductive at this point. So we're gonna gradually move into that, starting with one vote, that's gonna be around the governance reward, and then we're going to continue to evolve from that point on. Thanks, Sean. Massimo, question for you um, about, uh, it's a period a question. So will this governance be every three months till 2029? Uh, wrong person. The, the, the right people are in the chat uh, behind, you know. Now it's, it's three months and we will never change it without a vote. That's it. Okay. Um, Sean, a question for you. Uh, will governance mm -hmm. control what DAOs, DAPs, or third parties get in integrated onto the blockchain? That's an interesting thought. Um, but to be honest, we probably haven't dived too deep into that particular aspect. Um, obviously, there is a lot more consideration points, both technically and economically, in regards to how, how these applications and ecosystem partners will be integrating into the ecosystem, and whether that's something that uh, we'll put up uh, as simple as a vote. Uh, that's probably remains, uh, you know, remains something for, for consideration. Uh, but like I said, we, we want to make sure we have flexibility and transparency on how this is going to be done. So if that's something that our community would like to become part of our, our regular voting pattern, we will certainly look at that. Remember, we are going to be facilitating from now on, right? You guys decide. If the majority of you think that is the right type of vote to be to be happening on the governance program, let's do it. Great, thanks, Sean. Um, Shai or Massimo, um, will one governance period commence the moment the previous governance period has finished? I can answer that, I guess. Uh, yes, the way it works is uh, the last two weeks of the cover current governance period will be also the sign up window for the next one. So as soon as the current one finished, the next one kicks in. Uh, we will typically, hopefully always, publish all the voting sessions and ballots question and measures and everything for the next governance period as soon as we open the sign up window for it. So when you sign up, you will already know what are the things that you be called upon to vote on. Other than if we have emergency votes, which let's hope we won't ever. Uh, and it's the first one is a little different than all the others because it begins October, the sign up begins October 1st and the governance period ends December 31st. Starting from the second one, the sign up period will start December 18, uh, will end December 31st, and the governance period itself will commence uh, January 1st. And this is how it's going to be uh, going forward. The last two weeks of the current governance period is when you sign up to the next one. All right, thanks, Shai. Um, Massimo, a question for you. Um, have you considered any safeguards, controls, and the design of your governance structure intended to address the natural weaknesses of decentralized governance, such as a pr principal agent issue, a bad actor? Well, in a sense, you know, uh, all the design you have seen is, is, the, <coughs> is thought uh, with this in mind, you know. Uh, what is the meaning of commitment, you know, is that any bad actor that comes uh, is going to feel on his own skin, you know, any any bad action. You know? And, uh, uh, you know, the governors uh, may also decide to make these aspects even stronger after, you know, they are, they are training, uh, they are training the system. And, you know, the fact that we are making a design now is also to avoid, you know, uh, uh, 
essentially the, 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 the possibility of uh, uh, a disruptive attack. You know? That's part of the reason why, why, why there, is, uh, uh, there is design. You know? I would say that almost everything is built uh, uh, to, to, to protect uh, the ecosystem from uh, any, any such risk. Okay, um, Massimo, another question for you. Um, just wondering about uh, either delegating votes to the Algorand Foundation or having a voting system built into the official Algorand wallet. Well, it depends, you know. Uh, in a sense, there are many forms of community decision-making that we know of, you know, through all, all of human history. And uh, uh, we, we are not against uh, the concept of, uh, uh, you know, delegation. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we would like that by governor decision, uh, the, the, the role of uh, a delegate uh, is defined, exactly, going back to, to, to the last question, in such a way that really minimize any possibility of uh, delegating uh, uh, an attacker, you know, <laughs> with a little bit, little, little bit of pride, now that governance is starting, there is a form of very, very small delegation, which is the possibility vote with the foundation. So the foundation will give uh, uh, an advice for the different votes uh, and uh, um, a governor may decide at the beginning to decide, OK, count my vote uh, with the suggestions of uh, uh, the foundation. We can't say with the vote of the foundation because the foundation is, is not voting using no algos to, to, to vote. We, we have decided not to participate. But if for any reason a governor want to help uh, and at the same time he fears, uh, I'm not going to um, really have time to study all the issues. I may have a risk of missing a vote, you know. Okay, we give this three choices. If no one chooses it, this is not going uh, uh, to happen. And by the way, uh, certainly uh, in this period, the, the, the foundation will take no rewards, uh, even if uh, uh, delegated. Then in the future, if there will be other delegates, we will have to think, we, with the governors, have to think of a way of rewarding the service. Yeah. Joe, can I jump in with a quick question? Um, yes. Yes. Do, do the rewards actually ever expire? Which is quite a good question that was in the actual chat. No. Thanks, are, there any, are there any other questions? This, in the chat this is not a coupon. This is not a coupon. <laughs> and so there was, there was one other question just in relation to the period. So if the period opens up two weeks before the next period, will the rewards you earn from the previous period be able to be committed in the next period? I hope I articulated that question. It's a good question and the answer is no. I mean, you, you have to, I mean, yeah, the answer is no. You're only going to get these uh, rewards after the period ends, and by that time, the sign-up window for the previous window would have already be closed. But you could use them in the third period, and so yeah, yeah, so. of course. Then, yeah. then it's your, then it, they're your algos. You can do whatever you want with them. In particular, commit them to uh, future governance periods. There's a Thanks. question here, sorry, around thresholds. Um, what is the threshold for yes to pass? Massimo, are you, are you asking me? <laughs> no, the, the normal trend. We have not published that, so it means that a little bit uh, we may still be thinking. Well, usually the threshold is fifty percent plus one. You know, that there may actually be in the future. Again, we are talking of uh, what will be the topics that the governors will, will vote upon, uh, there will actually, there, there may be some decision that require uh, special, uh, special thresholds, higher, you know, usually. But no, nothing, no, no rules of this kind have, uh, have been set uh, for, for this period. Massimo, just a question. Um, how much profit should I expect to make? Well, it goes back to, 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 to the nice slide, uh, uh, I don't know, I think <laughs> Ron and put on, on, on the website, you know, that actually uh, shows, uh, uh, you know, the, the amount that uh, is allocated to, to, to governor rewards uh, uh, versus uh, the possible amounts of algos committed. That's the only answer, you know, it's, it's a proportion, it's a ratio, it's a division. I just see a question there from uh, the 
participants. Will the session be available for review later? Yes, uh, we are recording this and it will go up um, on the Foundation website. There's essentially no way out as well, Joanna. The minute the event finishes, every registrant and attendee will receive the recording on demand. So you'll have it in your inbox fairly quickly. Joe, I also saw a comment earlier whether the slides that we presented earlier can be made available. And I think certainly we should make that available as well. So let's identify a way where we can do that. Great, thanks. Um, so like uh, Sean, Shai, Massimo, um, everyone, you know, what we kind of discussed up and prep onto this, is there anything that you feel hasn't been covered? Um, that we should address, Ronan, your, your hand Just up. One, one quick question again, I, I noticed in the chat was just how long will the actual voting period be open for? So how long will people have to actually vote when, when they're requested to do so? I think that for the first period, we will probably have the voting for two weeks. And after that, if we see that that's too long, we'll make it shorter. But that's, it's gonna be, a matter of a few days to a few weeks, for sure. And sorry, another mm -hmm. question. Are voting options yes, no, abstain, um, aka is a position actually required or can you ignore certain votes? Well, I, I would say that in principle, there are no votes that you can ignore. That's a, a simple, simple principle. No, then the structure of uh, the measures within the votes, uh, as our economic advisory committee like uh, like to, to, to call them, uh, may change, you know. We, we, we will try to keep it simple, but, you know, um, as simple as possible, no more than so. And I, I think in general, um, again, to, to, to piggyback on Massimo's simple points, it, it will very likely be yes or no, or A or B, right? Make it very simple. And of course, as we mentioned before, there is the option to vote with foundation. So you can choose that as well. Oh, I wanted to say something about that before. I forgot. Uh, the way we will do the vote with the foundation is at least on the web application that we will provide, there would just be a checkbox. And if you check that box, it immediately fills out the entire ballot with the, fun the options that the foundation recommends and you still need to press the vote button and sign the transaction, et cetera, to do that. There's a question just there. Do governors have a minimum ALGO amount? Nope. Nope. Um, but just make sure that you have enough for transaction fee, right? Well, you need to pay transaction fee on any transaction, in particular, the sign up and the voting transaction you need to, um, but uh, if you commit 0 0.1 algo, you will vote with 0 0.1 algo. So, um, Shai, just on, uh, you know, the web app and, you know, timeline, when can the community expect to see this? We will open the, uh, the a web application on the day that the system goes live. Uh, if people want to participate in testing the system, we will have a system like that on testnet in a week or so. But other than that. Great. So I that's probably a good time to, to say, you know, we will probably not probably we will be doing another call with the community um, to run through um, the web app and how it will work. Um, so watch out for the invite on that um, we should be in the coming weeks and over the course of the next 21 days we will be updating content related to governance on our website and feeding out content related to the program and um, over the next 21 days so stay across our social announcements and, and news announcements on the website great and that's all in the uh, algoran foundation under governance right ro yeah yeah great okay um I think that's all the questions. Um, I, have one, I have one last question, if possible. Sorry, um, is like just the expectation around the amount of votes in a given governance period, um, initially and possibly in the future. Will it be one vote, or do we expect more than one vote to be required? Uh, I think we we cover uh, similar to this earlier uh, for the upcoming governance uh, period, the inception one. Uh, we are we're only working working on one vote, and that's going to be on governance reward. In the subsequent quarters, uh, we will be gradually increasing that. But we're gonna again, we're gonna keep it simple, uh, and, and we'll we'll ease into it. Let me put it that way. 
how many, you know, by quarter three and quarter four, I think we can all decide that together. Cool. Okay. Um, I think that's, I think that's everything. Um, Ronan, do you, is there any other questions? Cause I, cause I, you're, t you're looking at the uh, questions coming in. No, not so much questions. What I will call out is, um, we obviously promoted this over the last sort of week, two weeks. Um, we received over 2,200 registrants, which is just an amazing response from the community. Um, one of the limitations I've noticed is you can only actually have a thousand attendees on this actual platform. And that's, you know, the most that, you know, are, are any plan can can have under this. So moving forward, it might be given the level of interest, we might work on maybe pushing out two sessions to accommodate different time zones, but I'll share that out um, as a consideration for future events, just given the level of uptake, which has been phenomenal. So thank you for that. Yes, and thanks to everyone, all the like participants. Um, we don't have a community without you. So uh, thanks so much for joining us on this call. Um, I want to say a massive thanks to the panelists. Also, a huge thanks to Ronan as well, which this call would not be possible. Um, and keeping us all in check. Um, and he's probably the closest to governance out of uh, everyone. So thanks, Ronan. Um, and, uh, and thank you so much and watch out for our next installment around governance. Um, so you're all kept up to date. Anything? Um, you know, you can check in at any time on the Algorand Foundation website under governance um, and keep an eye on our social channels as well. So thanks a million to everyone. Shai, Sean, Massimo and Ronan. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.